Thanks for joining me once again. Today I'm looking at sheep without a shepherd. On the last video I was talking about how we are to look at other people as God sees them. Well Jesus was God and Jesus is God. How did he look upon the people who followed him? Well I'm looking in Matthew's Gospel today to find the answer to that. Matthew used to be a hated tax collector for the Roman army of occupation of Israel. But he obeyed the call of Jesus and followed him and left his tax collector's booth. You can read that in Matthew 9 and verse 9. Jesus chose a hated tax collector. But think about it. This man was used to keeping accurate records of what each citizen had paid in their taxes. He remembered the less important details. He knew people. He remembered things about people. So in that sense, he was an ideal witness of what Jesus did and what Jesus said as he went about his ministry. Now I'm going to be reading a couple of verses from Matthew 9, verses 35 and 36. And I'm very happy to show you this new translation of the Bible that I've just bought. Kenneth West, the New Testament, an expanded translation. I'm so pleased with this new translation of Kenneth West. It's, it's brilliant. He paints pictures with words. He's very, very good. He's given enough words to show the true meaning of the original Greek. So it's very accurate and very easy to read. So here it is in uh, Matthew 9, 35 and 36 in that translation. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom and healing every disease and every sickness. And having seen the crowds, he was moved with compassion concerning them because they were exhausted by their troubles and their long aimless wanderings and had thrown themselves on the ground in an utterly prostrate condition as sheep not having a shepherd. And I think it's a, a very good illustrative way of explaining how how Jesus saw the people and how he responded is coming up in a minute. Now West is an expanded translation from the Greek. Can you can you see in this images that he's painted with words, people just wanting Jesus to give them a free meal or a healing or maybe to free them from demons, but in total frustration and desperation, throwing themselves flat on the ground as sheep without a shepherd. Let's see what the response of Jesus, the response of love that Jesus made towards the people. In verse 37 and 38 of the same chapter, again from the West Translation, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to thrust out workers into the harvest. And having called to himself his 12 disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to be ejecting them and to be healing every disease and every sickness. So probably within a short period of time, having regarded the people and seen them so helpless, Jesus chose and gathered his disciples and did something about it. He sent these 12 into the harvest. He said to his disciples, go exclusively. This is in the next chapter of Matthew, Matthew 10 and verse 6. Go exclusively to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Don't go to the Samaritans. Don't go to the Gentiles. Go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, these were his instructions in Matthew 10, verse 7 and 8, again from the West Translation. Go and make a public proclamation with such formality, gravity and authority as must be listened to and obeyed. So when you go, you don't just preach it. You preach it with formality, gravity and authority. Make a, a big deal of this uh, proclamation. 
It must be listened to and must be obeyed. And this is the proclamation. The kingdom of heaven has come near and is imminent. And when you do that proclamation, look around and heal those who are sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers and eject the demons. Those were his radical instructions that the disciples had to follow. As I say, he forbade the preaching and demonstration of the gospel in the cities of the Gentiles and Samaritans. That's in verse 5 of chapter 10. But everything changed when God chose Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul. He became known as the Apostle to the Gentiles because through the blood of Christ, the gospel was then offered to everybody, Jew and non-Jew alike. And Paul demonstrated this in his preaching. He was, uh, you know, in a big problem with the other original disciples in, in the council of uh, Jerusalem. He, he had a bit of a problem with James and with Peter and so on, but they recognised the authority that God had given him to preach to the non-Jew and to the Gentiles. Now, Saul, Apostle Paul, took this gospel, the same one, the kingdom of heaven is near, healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, kicking out the demons. He took that to everyone, including the non-Jews, especially to the non-Jews. When we see people around us with their facades of heavy makeup, fashionable clothes, nice cars, pretty homes, God looks at them as poor, naked and blind. Now we're not in Mozambique like Heidi, but in our villages and in our towns, we are God's sent ones. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. And as you scan the faces of those in the marketplace and shops and in the streets, they've got their mask on, their makeup on and their pretty clothes on. Underneath, they are desperate for answers. Let's be available to them as shepherds and help them to find healing by returning to the true shepherd of their souls. That's a great verse to know. 1 Peter 2, 25, the one after 1 Peter 2, 24. God bless you. Let's be shepherds to these poor people. Sheep without shepherds.